So my name's Art Carrillo. I'm from Los Angeles. I currently live in Boyle Heights, right near this, uh, the Sixth Street Bridge here. I'm an artist. I'm an acrylic painter. I, I work with acrylics. I do photorealism, a little bit of everything. I happen to be Mexican-American. I happen to live in this, in this, in this community. Um, I happen to be part of this culture, so my artwork reflects that. It's also American because we're in America. Um, so you can call it Chicano art, you call it American art, but um, as long as you call it fine art, that's, um, you know, that's what I'm trying to produce, fine artwork. That's it. Like, I never knew I could paint like this, dude. So just, you know, fucking seeing what I, I do inspires me. So I don't know what I'm capable of, you know, until I paint it. So I could say, yeah, I could paint that, I could paint this, but not every painting is the same. So every, every painting has its challenges. You should inspire yourself. But other artists too. Like I said, Amelia Cruz, her artwork inspires me. Her people doing great things inspires me. He's one of the artists that art collectors know that they want to collect. Go into the kitchen, look at the, the painting on the breakfast table there. That's his. It's one of his best. The brothers gift it more so than most. And his role to become an artist has been the easiest. But he's never turned his back on art and never wandered away. And he's still young. He hasn't even done his best work, put it that way. So if you're wise, you would save your money and buy some paintings of his. I was always like drawing when I was in school. I was always creating artwork when I was in school. So I was always like the best kid in the class. It kind of it kind of helped me to keep my friends because I used to get like picked on and stuff. So that so my drawings was a way to 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 you know have friends. They would see my drawings, they liked them, they thought it was cool, so they were cool with me. And when I was a kid, you know, I didn't think oh this is gonna save me because you know I was I didn't think I was gonna get in trouble. You know, you're not thinking about that stuff. You don't think you're gonna fuck up your life. You know, you know, you're thinking you're gonna grow up. You know, actually, I thought I was gonna be like an architect. But eventually in high school, that's when I started just, you know, like, I guess not, not giving a fuck. And, you know, I got into, I started tagging and stuff. Then eventually, well, um, you know, I like to, I like to um, do everything 100%. So then I thought, okay, well, tagging is like one step below gangs. And you, you get into kind of tagging because you really don't want to get into a gang and stuff. But then my brother started hanging out with us and he got into the gang first. So then I, I got into the gang. But not everybody turns out that, that, that well, you know? I mean, I got more into drugs. So, you know, I became a drug addict too. So, you know, I got lost and stuff. And then after that, just, you know, you know, really not doing anything that was, you know, uh, productive and just, you know, realizing what I had become. It was like, you know, cause you don't, you don't see yourself when you're a kid, you're becoming that. And it's like, dude, you're not proud of yourself. I went back to school, got my bachelor's degree in graphic design. A lot of my work in graphic design suffered because, um, well, I wanted to paint. Cause I wanted to do something that I love. You know, at some point, you know, cause, at that point, I, w I was just working. There wasn't anything that I was doing that I loved that like made me feel like, like you know, like happy to be alive or like you know, to be happy like to, to you know, happy for life. And that got me back into painting. I, I started getting a lot of attention in that, and then that's just like you know, just like you realize with everything, if you're good at something, there's always going to be a place for you. There's going to be a spot for you. 2012. That's when I started like showing what, what I would say professionally, like in legit galleries, and then I really started selling like in 2015. And then like 2015, 2016, that's like since about 2017, uh, I've pretty much sold about 85% of my work and that's where I've been at. You know, I try to paint a little bit about everything. So, but I do touch on the, on the, on the, um, the gang culture, the gang life. I'll try to paint up things that don't glorify it. Like I have a painting that has to do with the, with the car wash. Usually they'll have a car wash because one of the homies got shot and killed and stuff. So that painting has to do with that, the, the unglorified side of the gang life, you know, the death side, you know, it's the side that, you know, where you lose a brother, you lose a mom or you lose a family member. So like I said, you know, when I do touch on the gang, the gang culture, I'm gonna paint about things that, 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 you know, don't make it seem so cool. Arturo is a uh, Chicano, so therefore he belongs in, be, within the, that label. But to me, Arthur's work is much more than a Chicano artist. 
because if you really look at his work, uh, it has a classical discipline. So if you didn't know that this man was a Chicano, uh, if you would recognize uh, the classic techniques of the masters. That mysterious, that touch, that endless, that uh, sophisticated whisper of timeless, you know? For example, in this painting, I can smell le the leather. That's a Mexican person, I can feel it just by looking at it. The reason why he will be studied in the future is because of that, because if you didn't give this man a label, you wouldn't know. He doesn't be belong within the limits of what we consider or we give each other. Not all artwork has to make you feel fuzzy wuzzy in your tummy and stuff, you know, make you feel good or, or it has to be beautiful and pretty. You know, you have to remember art reflects life and life has to do with everything, the good, the bad, the ugly. So I like that. So George Bellows, Norman Rockwell, um, Goya is another one. He did a, he, he, he redid one called uh, Zeus, where Zeus is eating his son, a classic, a classic that's painted classically, but he did it all, you know, uh, uh, very loose and the, his interpretation was very weird and very strange and still very disturbing. So what I liked about that is like, you know, a lot of times in music or in certain things, people will remake something from of the original and it's not as good. That's why like, that's what re, re, uh, Goya reminded me that if you're going to redo something, yours better be sick too. You know, it, 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 hopefully it's not a cheap knockoff from the original. You know, there's so I, t I do take advice from people that, you know, um, that I appreciate or admire. Sometimes it might not be from, it might be from somebody that I don't know. And so maybe they say something that, 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 that makes sense to me and you know, I'll take that advice, you know, I'll take what they're said and you know, I'll use it. So, you know, I'm always open-minded for sure. But a lot of times people are just, you know, um, giving their opinion and it's not fact, it's just an opinion. Basically, I, I don't like it. You know, their, their attitude a lot of times is like, I don't like it, therefore it's, it's wrong. It's like, no, you just don't like it. Move, who cares, good, whatever. He's for real, <laughs> I love him. When he talks about himself, I told him, you have to read by Minuto Cellini, and I was the best at this and the best at that, and I did this and that. And the way he just he expresses himself about his reality and how powerful his persona and, uh, and personality and talent. We need more of that, man. And, and I have had the pleasure of meeting also some other homeboys who, who instead of ending up in more sudden ways, that dedicated their life to art. So, but today we're about that porcarillo. His portrayal of contemporary, you know, our times and, and ordinary people, as I mentioned. And uh, one of my fam favorite still lives from Francisco de Surbaran. When I saw his work, it's like, oh my God, if these guys were still alive in the year 2020, this is like the energy he has. But you know, with the Dodgers, blankets, inst instead of fancy, whatever. It's very classical, it's museum quality, as he mentioned. He knows, he knows, he's good, he's really excellent. One of the best contemporary artists. And it's a pleasure to be in touch with him. It's like energy reincarnated from, from the most beautiful classical uh, master works that have been done for a thousand years and uh, and more. I, I really love his work and this guy is worth uh, admiration. Chicano soul <laughs> and power and youth which we need. I was thinking about like art therapy because there's a lot of people that 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 need therapy and art's fun. I love it. Um, I like to talk to people and um, I, you know, I think maybe it's, you know, and since I like to talk to people, I think that's something that I, I and I'm very compassionate, you know, I'm very compassionate and stuff, you know, I, I'm not out here to fucking harm people if I could help somebody um, by even, you know, giving them a smile and stuff and, you know, changing the day or whatever, you know, I'd love, I'd love to do that. I like say, you know, I've, I've already done enough stuff in my life where, you know, being mean or being a jerk, it's, it's, it's you know, it's not the way to be. Um, so, but that's been something that I've been thinking about. Um, but 
in general, just really focusing on trying to, you know, make that leap to where I make a living off of my work and so I could leave my job and I could just paint. Maybe, maybe find a sugar mama, shit. <laughs> as long as I could paint, bro, fuck it. <laughs> we live and try to contribute to this life in, in any way that you can, if you can. And um, especially because, you know, life can be tough. You want, I guess you want to be a, a positive, radiant light or being or, or, you know, while you're here on this planet and stuff, you know, don't be, you want, at least for me, meaning of life is just to be here and enjoy it, get the most out of it, you know, probably help out, you know, help other people to maybe try to enjoy it. And, you know, and that's about it, I guess. Don't kill people. Don't be a fucking dick, <laughs> you know? <laughs>